All right, I'm Dave Ratt, and um, I am going to take a look at loading down the outputs of these consoles. Actually, that's what I set out to do today. And you know when you like sit down, you think you got everything under control, and all of a sudden you get like this, oh, crap moment. What have I done? I had one of those happen to me when I was setting all this up and... Um, uh, getting these levels calibrated. And I was like, oh no, the first video I did on these, um, I compared levels and the output levels between the Xenix and the X32 and M32, and I showed some pretty drastic differentials. Um, and I wasn't using a scope. I was just using this calibrated Duros meter, which does 1 dB increments. Now, uh, I had some questions on that, and the Duros meter actually has a rotating knob, and I can set this right there at zero. And when I set it at zero, the meter will read, um, you know, when it reads plus four in the meter, it's actually plus four. I can rotate that knob to plus 20, and it'll add 20 dB. So if it reads plus four, and I've switched, I've rotated it to 20, then it's reading plus 24. Um, and I can kind of mess around with all that stuff. Any case, um, oh, I want to give a shout out to Angel who loaned me the Midas M32. I'm wrapping up with that, hopefully, and I'm going to give it back to him. Thank you. Uh, I'll hang on to the X32 because I bought it. And um, I've got a Allen and Heath QU16 sitting here. I've got a, a Digico SD11 I will bring from Rat and this trusty Xenix here. Um, so it turns out that the issue I'm having is the measurement gear itself. Look what happens when I line everything up. So I've got that set at minus 18 dBFS on the input, the output, all the faders are at zero, um, the input gain's at zero, the signal should be passing straight through. And I've got 3.5 volts in, and I am seeing um, one, to 3.5 volts out approximately with that M32. Same thing with the X32. And let's get this dialed in here. And if I set the Behringer at zero, I also get 3.5 volts. This is all good. This is exactly what happened. Plus 4 dB out on all with 3.5 volts in. But that's not what I found when I had originally tested. What did I do? Did I really mess up a whole video based on these having differentials on their outputs? Um, did I miss this? I test things in real world. I test straight into the meters. I test in a, a scenario that is um, as we would normally be using. Look what happens if I unplug the scope. It's right here to the Duros meter. We can see that it's jumped to plus 11 on the Behringer. Now, let's look at the Behringer. We see plus 5 plus 5 and plus 11. Now, that difference that I found in the very first video that I did on this, where I showed the Xenix had a lot higher output, has come back. Turns out that by shorting, by going from balanced to unbalanced, um, in order to measure on the scope, it was reducing the output and not letting the Behringer output its full potential. So I made a line balancing um, measurement adapter that takes the pin 2 and runs it I'll mute that and it runs pin 2 to the yellow here it runs pin 3 out of hilarity as it which it is to the blue and then this math menu here the red one is the difference between the two as a line balancing circuit would do so now if i set these both to uh, one volt. We can now see the red is what would be seen to the next piece of gear. Now let's go ahead and set things and calibrate them. 
and let's see if it lines up with what we expect. At one volt, we have one, two, and a half, three, about 3.5 volts. We can see it here. And there we've got it. So we should see seven squares of the eight, and we can see we're about a half a square down on top and bottom. So there's our 3.5 volts on the red, and that's on the M32. The X32 is exactly the same, very slight difference. And on the Behringer, I have to bring it down to get to that point. So now we've calibrated them all, and now we're seeing, I've got it pretty close. Now we're seeing what I saw in the beginning. I would have never found that had I used test gear. I would have assumed that they had all similar outputs, which they don't because of the unbalanced input to the scope. I would have made an assumption. Um, that's why I do things in real world. And um, um, it's kind of cool. I had a oh shit moment that um, turned into an aha moment. Okay, so now that we've got that together, we've got an output of plus five, minus 18 dBFS, and the Behringer Xenix is reading minus seven. Now let's go ahead and double check my other conclusion, which was that the Xenix had much higher output. And in order to do that, let's go ahead and bring this up to clip. And I'm gonna have to gain up, gain up the vocal here, the voltage here, and we'll go right on up to eight volts and it's just starting to clip and we'll bring our voltage down and we can see that there is our max output of the M32 and let's go up 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 and there's the clip and back down and we see the clip visually we've got the clip light there and our maximum voltage of the M32 is one two three four Five squares, five times five is 25, about 26 volts peak to peak. We can look that up. I'm not going to do it now and determine what that is in actual output dB. Um, let's look at the X32. And let's bring that up and we can bring it up here to clip. Yep, it's starting to clip. So we're right at this exact same amount of output coming off the X32 with that 26 volts peak to peak. Now let's take a look at the Xenix. And we'll bring this up. And there it is. But look what happens. I can just keep going and going and going. In fact, I can go so I can, my scope won't even handle the input level. So now what I've got to do is I've got to offset um, a couple squares so we can see part of the waveform and no one just and right about there. There, we're starting to clip, so we're probably well under clip there. Um, we're seeing about one, two, three, four, five, a little over five squares, 25 volts times two, about 50 volts, over 50 volts peak to peak coming off of this, over double the voltage. I think it's like 53. In order to get that three, I, I measured that there was a four dB more output um, coming out of the Xenix than the X32 and M32. And to do that, if these are putting out 25 or 26 volts, then we definitely got to put out over 50 volts coming out of the Behringer, and we are seeing that. Uh, it's surprising because they don't rate this Behringer in the spec. They only rate it at plus 22, but it's putting out plus 25 or more. All right. That's not what I was going to do. What I really want to do here is get this thing back down to um, Okay, so now what we're going to do is load down these outputs. So I've got this spare Y end here that um, and we see our plus five on the duro meter should be plus four but hey we're close enough and what i've got is some y cables all plugged into three spare inputs on this little xenix we use it to load down so what i'll do is let's say we're just going to hook up to one output one powered speaker or whatever we're going to plug into and we'll look at the m32 and we will plug that speaker in and see what happens to the waveform and we can see that it drags it down, ooh, just a little tiny bit, five volts, so maybe a volt. Five, there's a whole volt, 500 millivolts per thing, so a tenth of a volt. 
Um, cool. Let's see what happens with the X32. So that's just kind of a test. What happens to these outputs? Measuring these outputs with test equipment and not putting an actual load on it tells us more about what's going on. Now I'm going to go to the Behringer. And here we actually see a bigger drop. So it's got more output, but it also drops more when loaded. Maybe a slight, um, higher voltage, but a higher impedance output. Now let's put three. Let's say you take and daisy chain three self-powered speakers together, or you're hitting three different amplifiers. Sometimes you might take the output of a console and hit 10 amplifiers. You might hit a whole slew of amps, or you might hit one processor that then hits all the amps. So let's see what happens if we hit three inputs. And we can see we do. We drop almost uh, 500 times two, almost a full volt of drop. And then the X and M32, we only see um, about a, a third of a volt a drop, 300 millivolts or so. Um, we saw these Zenix had a lot more output. We saw that big drop. Can we overcome it? What happens at the maximum? Let's go ahead and zoom this up to eight volts. Um, and let's bring this all the way down. And let's see what happens. Uh, now we're right at clip there and we're on the M32 and unloaded, loaded. Let's go a little hotter into clip, unloaded, loaded. So the clip, which isn't happening on the input, it's happening on the output circuit on the meters is unaffected. We get less output, but the clip stays the same. It's not clipping because it's being loaded down. Uh, let's try the same thing on the X32. Same thing, we're clipping and it loads down that clipped signal. Um, and let's try the same thing on the Behringer. And let's go ahead and game this thing up. And unloaded, loaded. So loaded, it definitely drops down. This has got a higher impedance output, a lot of voltage. It runs a lot of juice, but it um, definitely loads down more. And now with them all up near their clip world, let's get them right near clip. Um, and let's compare the three. Let's bring this down a little bit. And this one down a little bit. Okay, that's pretty close. Now let's see what their maximum output looks like. And we still see, even though the loading is loading down the Behringer, it uh, still has more output. All right. Um, Cool, cool. And uh, thank you for joining. And um, that's it for output loading. And I don't know what I'll do next. Cool.